Hi everybody, welcome to another video. Well, as I mentioned in a previous video, I had bought the Cloud Watcher from Lunatico, I think that's how you say their name. Um, it used to be called the AAG Cloud Watcher, but I think they've dropped the AAG bit now. But uh, this was it here, which I showed you, this little box. Um, but I needed some other bits so I could do the installation. So what I did order was the bracket that they make specifically for it. thought it was easier just to get the one that this will directly bolt on to. Um, it bolts on about like that and uh, that's where it attaches to the pole and this is on a bit of a slope because if rain gets on it you want the water to roll off. Um, I also ordered the anemometer which if I just pass this through here goes there and then this plugs up into one of these two plugs. I've got to work out which one it is. Um, and this also comes with the required sort of nuts and bolts and attachments and everything so I can put it together. Um, as I think I showed in the other video I've got the 7 meter cable that, that connects to this and also then connects to the computer. I do have to get one of the serial connections to USB but I think I've got one of those or a couple of those hanging around. Um, and then it was a matter of deciding where am I going to attach this. So I obviously can't attach it to the roof because the roof is moving and um, I can't have the wires you know moving around this cable won't you can't connect it and have it moving so I really wanted it to be on the observatory rather than on a separate pole and I didn't really want to put it down the other end of the observatory where the rails are for the roof to roll off onto because then it's a long way back to the observatory so I'm going to put it at the top end um, of the observatory where the roof rolls away and there's a sort of bit of a peak in the wall there so it'll go there. Uh, because I have eaves on my observatory I need the pole to be able to clear the eaves so that's where I ordered this um, so it'll attach to the wall of the observatory it'll come out far enough to the, clear the eave and then this will go up and should just clear the roof as well. Um, interestingly, uh, it was extremely hard to find anything like this in New Zealand. I did eventually find one place selling it, but it was about four times the price as this. And uh, the other thing is this came all the way from the UK. So, um, yeah, it's very hard to get hold of things uh, that you need specifically in this country. And they usually cost you a fortune. So, um, yeah. Let's go out to the observatory and uh, get that uh, pole and the bracket attached and um, see if we can get this thing all hooked up to the computer inside the observatory. Right, so this is a wall I'm going to be installing it on and uh, you can see there's an eave here that I need to get out from under. So that's where this comes in and... My plan is to install it like this. And that's why it's clear of the eave and it's clear of the roof and it'll come out sort of in this direction here. Um, now as far as connecting something in here, um, I have worked out that there is a 4x2 running down here and in the centre there were two 4x2s together running down to about here. So if I go right next to this nail here, it should go into the 4x2 that's running down here and it should go into these two 4x2 here. Fingers crossed. Okay you can see here with the pole there is a bit of variation where you can maneuver it around a bit if you're not dead. Got the holes in the right place exactly so that's a bit of vertical movement there and a bit of horizontal across there and I'm going to be attaching using these which hopefully should be strong enough to hold it in there. I uh, want to get stainless steel ones, um, trying to get something that's thicker than this um, but not incredibly long and stainless steel is quite tricky. I uh, couldn't find it in our hardware stores unless I wanted to buy a hundred of them at $76 and that just wasn't going to happen. So um, I'll start drilling some holes and we'll get this attached. Okay, feels nice and strong and secure. Okay, hopefully you can hear over the noise next door. Um, but I've put it all together here, I've spared you the um, 
pain of having to watch me fiddle around with little nuts and, and bolts and things. So the anemometer's on here and it bolts into here. And uh, now I've just got to attach this to that. So hopefully, um, sort of had a go at it and realised I've got it, had it run the wrong way, so I'm going to try it again. <laughs> Okay, that's up. Okay, I'm back with a cable and some cable ties. Turns out it's easy to work out which is which because uh, this one has three pins and this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pins. So. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Seemed to go in easy enough. Now I need to roll the roof off a bit so I can get the cable inside. That'll do. Okay, so all I need to do is get one of those um, clips and nail it on here to keep this down here so that it doesn't get hit by the roof. I've got to go find those now. Okay, I got one of these, hopefully it'll be the right size. If it's a bit small, I'll hold it down temporarily and get a new one, a bigger one later. Let's just check the roof doesn't hit one of those. <laughs> oh. Yes it does. Okay. That wasn't very good. So I'll show you what I've had to do. Um, so I've cable tied the cable across this bracket and then when it comes to going through here I thought there was going to be enough gap when the roof closed but there wasn't and the roof sort of hit one of these um, pins holding down the uh, the wire, the cable, I mean because I wanted it as flat as possible down to here and um, hopefully it hasn't damaged it but anyway if you have a look in the distance there you can see I've cut a little sort of curvy space uh, out of that so it goes over the top um, and doesn't hit it and I'll just tidy that up later and sort of paint it and make it look a little bit prettier but um, if we just close the roof now you can see it misses it. Okay and we are all uh, set up as far as the hardware is concerned. Um, if you're wondering why the anemometer is not really spinning and that's because there's basically no wind today. Maybe a tiny breeze now. If we just go inside I'll show you what I've done with the cabling down the wall. So I've just run it down here um, and under the mat here and for those offended by um, messy cabling please look away now but um, this is the cable here and then I've connected one of those serial to USB ports and connected it to my USB hub so the next thing is to check that it actually works and that the computer can um, pick it up. First I've got to download the software on to the computer that's the CloudWatcher software so it can talk to Nina. Right well that brings me into the hardware setup part of the video um, and part two I'll show you the software setup. To be honest with you the hardest part of this whole connection and hardware setup was 
this thing here, this serial to USB um, connection. Now they use a, a sort of a serial type um, cable uh, from the uh, Cloud Watcher, and I can't understand why because often you're running over sort of reasonable distances with these cables because you've got to try and you know keep your Cloud Watcher a little bit clear of the observatory or the roof anyway. I'm using a seven meter cable, they can use up to 10 meter cables. Uh, my understanding is that USB struggles sort of for five meters or more and I've certainly found that as well. Whereas sort of serial type um, connections can, can go 15 meters. So I understand why they've done that. It's just that when you're trying to convert the serial to the USB was the sticking point. Now my computer out in the observatory had Windows 10 on it. I kept resisting um, the insistence of Microsoft to upgrade to Windows 11 and I'm not sure what exactly happened but one day I turned on the computer and it said welcome to Windows 11. What's wrong? Seriously? You auto updating now? It was done. Um, I don't remember asking for it to happen but you know, that's Windows for you. Microsoft! Um, anyway, it turns out that a lot of uh, serial to USB cables just don't work with you with Windows 11 and I think it's something to do with the fact that you know particularly ones that don't have genuine prolific chipsets in them I think that's what it is I, I'm not an expert on these but um, certainly all the ones that I had didn't work and I had to go and buy a new one that had been tested uh, and worked with Windows 11 so I'll put a link in the description below to the one that I'm using that I know does work the other thing is um, Plugging this into or this bit into the USB hub, it just didn't work. So I had to go direct to the computer and then everything was was fine. So um, yeah, that is the problem. Make sure you get one that is Windows 11 compatible and preferably has the prolific chipset, I understand, inside of this. Anyway, look, I hope you found this um, video useful, at least part one with part two coming. And until the next video, I wish everybody lots and lots of clear skies.